Hi everyone, my name is Shui. I am a PhD student at Monash University. I am very happy to be here today at Tide 2021. And today, I want to introduce you to Chameleon Type Debugger. Chameleon Type Debugger is my PhD project. It is a Haskell code editor that has a focus on type level support. It has been undertaken for a year by me and my two supervisors, Professor Tim Dwyer and Professor Peter Stuckey. Chameleon is a debugging environment for Haskell language. The most comparable tool to Chameleon is GHC, in that they both ensure the program is correct by a certain types. In terms of functionality, Chameleon does not compile or evaluate Haskell code. In this regard, it takes a similar approach that TypeScript and MyPy take. Additionally, shaping within an editor front end, Chameleon is designed to provide more bespoke solution for diagnosing type errors. It tries to present types and relations between types in a way that is more easily parsed by human eyes. The original Chameleon team started this project in early 2000. At that time, Chameleon was a command line tool. It looks something like this. The main promises of Chameleon project was to assert types using constraints and constraint handling rules generated from program syntax. It has its own limitations, but I believe it informs some important merits of constraint-based type systems. Having constraint programs as an intermediate step between syntax and type solving, we can ask many interesting questions about types and program comparing to a Henley Milner based type system. The original Chameleon team pivot on this point, explores the techniques of finding minimal unsatisfiable subset and use it to fine tune error locations and narrow down the possible courses after the type errors are detected. This is traditionally not trivial with Henley Milner based systems and algorithm W. This result in the chameleon has an advantage in pointing out errors both accurately and precisely. Note that this advantage in type error reporting did not come for free. It is achieved at the cost of added layer of complexity. My work on chameleon starts from the year 2020. Our initial goal was to improve type error reporting with the help of modern IDE capability. However, we recognized the value Chameleon project brought to the table and decided to revive the code base. We went through a lot of housekeepings to bring the code base up to speed. We renewed many third-party library usages, updated the code to new language standard and uh, proposals. We rewrite the unification and constraint solving logic because the old implementation is built on top of C and foreign function interface and it suffers from some cross platform compatibility issues due to its age. We generalize the way Chameleon report type errors from a text based error message to a data oriented approach. This is more in line with modern IDE pipelines. And uh, on top of all that, we built an editor front end that is capable of converting community output into interactive type error diagnosis. With the new community project, our team is dedicated to making more user focused Haskell tools. The goal of community is to offer a more gentle learning curve for new Haskell programmers and tools for teaching Haskell programming more effectively. We don't have data to support us on this, 
but seeing the first few Haskell error messages frustrated many beginners. And this frustration may deny many people from getting to the stage where they can fully appreciate the beauty of Haskell language. In that light, we want our tools to help people develop a good rapport with Haskell top system by providing more helpful on the point error messages and try not to trivialize nor exaggerate the real problem. Now it is time we get a taste of debugging with Chameleon. A typical Chameleon debugging environment looks exactly like other code editors. With the code on the left and the debugging tools will appear on the right side of the editor. Without further ado, let me introduce the first feature we will demonstrate today, the Type Compare View. The Type Compare View is an alternative representation to the Haskell type error expecting type A after type B. In this example, on the right pane, Chameleon debugging window informs us that two different types can be assigned to the function A, namely Boolean to Boolean and Boolean to String. If we hover on one of these types, Chameleon will highlight all the relevant locations on the left. In this case, it has something to do with the else branch of the if expression, the term D, and the value false. If we move the cursor to the other type, some other locations will be highlighted. One thing type compare view does very well is finding out all the locations that are possible places to fix. In this example, we have more code and types that are involved in the error, and all relevant parts are identified, distinguished, and highlighted by chameleon. The motivation of type compare view is to address the limitation of how GHC as well as many other type systems report type errors. Typically, a type error relates to multiple conflicting facts in the program. However, most often only one of the facts is blamed, the others are assumed correct and ignored. This is due to the way Haskell type, type inference is carried out. It follows the order of syntax tree. Simply speaking, Type system will continuously traverse the syntax tree, find type inference rules to apply, modify type environment, and produce judgments. Once type error occurs, it will stop immediately and report the most recently visited term. Type compare view does not rely on syntax. It continuously shrinks the constraint set until it reached minimal unsatisfiability from the remaining constraints. We can populate all the information we need to power Chameleon debugging interface. The second feature we demonstrate is the type deduction view. Type deduction view is an extension of the type compare view. But in addition to two possible types, we also show the users all the unification clauses that result in a type error. In the example code on the left, we have a data type for password and an operation of the type password type. A password value is constructed by a data constructor P and a string value. If we consult the type deduction view, we see an array of gray boxes between the two possible types. We call them deduction steps. These blue stripes inside of each step are minimaps of locations that are involved in the type error. If we hover on one of them, some parts on the left will get highlighted. The highlights on the left mirrors the minimaps on the right. The steps in the example can be understood like this. Validate has the type password to string. 
because of the type annotation. And the function validate must have the same type as the annotation suggests. The function validate takes an argument called password. And the term password appears in the line 6 inside of the condition test. And the term password is an argument of the function length. The, the type of the function length dictates that password must have the type list of A. And therefore, validate must have the type list of A to string. And we can clearly see one of the steps need to change in order to resolve the type error. In this case, it is a missing pattern matching in step 3. Let's try another example. In this one, we can see that the function price has integer type because it is ascribed explicitly. The type of price should be the result type of the function get movie price. And the function get movie price is defined in top level. When given an argument, the value get movie price evaluates to should has the same type as the variable a, which is pattern matched from the movie data type. The movie data type is defined as a product of string and integer. And the term a being the first pattern matching variable should have string type. And thus we know something is wrong. Upon careful inspection, we find out Step 3 is the root of our problem, and we can fix this by returning the other pattern matching variable. The motivation behind type deduction view is to narrow down the contributing factors of a type error. Sometimes, we cannot help the programmers pinpoint the root of the problem, because these contributing factors could be too many, or too far away from each other. But what we can do is help breaking down the problem into smaller ones. In this case, it's breaking down the type checking into several small type checkings. In this sense, it is similar to injectively rebasing a Git branch. Note that this is not some far-fetched interface idea that never happened in human computer interfacing. It is common in the domains where step-by-step -step reasoning is required. It is even common in our day-to-day -day life. The last feature we will showcase is the traffic line notation. Traffic line notation is a pictorial view of the Haskell type language. The most common way to use traffic line notation is to simply select some code fragments and consult their types on the fly. In traffic line notation, simple types are just showing as dots. Different types have different colors, and they can be polymorphic. If the type is constructed by a type function, then the context is showing as a rounded box, and the inner types are still dots. Similarly, Different type constructors have different colors. Notice that types can be nested, and you can always check which type constructor or type constant corresponds to which part of the type signature by moving the mouse onto the shape. In case of higher rank types, multiple type arguments can share one single box. Function types are a bit different in traffic line notation. We have some special treatments for functions because they are so ubiquitous in Haskell. Most significantly, the final types of the function is in the tail extended from the box. This is to make the error more clear to the programmers. It is easy to scan that Plus is a binary function, and the negate is a unary function. 
and it also has the effect of making higher order functions look a bit nicer. This is a flip function. It reverses the order of two arguments of a given function. See if you can guess the shape. It is possible to query type for parts of an expression. This is particularly useful because it instantiates more polymorphic types to concrete ones. Using these techniques also help programmers making incremental reasoning about their program and types. When teaching Haskell, this is a useful resource to help students understand the usage of querying. Of course, some of these features can be turned on in conjunction. For instance, traffic light notation does a great job standing in as the possible types in type compare view or type deduction view. Do a quick mirror check in traffic line notation help us eliminate families of type errors, such as wrong number of arguments and incorrect layers of contexts. Finally, I want to discuss the future of Chameleon. First and foremost, we will continue to develop and improve Chameleon type debugger. The majority of examples we showed today can be described as type mismatch, which are two or more types directly contradicting with each other. But in reality, there are more subtle differences that should be taken care of. And there are other classes of type errors that are beyond the scope of mismatching. Think about missing type class instance. Think about constructing infinite types, subtyping errors, and errors raised from advanced features such as GDTs and type families. We will continue to include more advanced type debugging features to make Chameleon suitable as a feature complete Haskell IDE. On that note, although we are committed to make Chameleon a test ground for fresh new ideas in type system integration, we also want to generalize the features that have been proven useful and make them available in mainstream editors such as VS Code, Emacs, and Veeam, and uh, make them compatible with popular debugging protocols such as LSP. Besides that, we also want to pivot on the advantage of added layer from using a constraint-based type system. We hope this layer of indirection will make part of our work more transferable and more language agnostic. In the future, we would like to graft the community editor features and constraint solver part into other language settings by adding language-specific constraint generating rules. We are curious to see the implication of applying Chameleon to languages with unique flavors in type systems. At the moment, we have put a version of Chameleon Editor online, and we want to invite people who are interested to test out our editor features with real-world Haskell problems. We have run this study with a few university students, but we hope an open online user study from a more diverse mix of users will give us more insights of the feature set design. If you are interested in contributing to this research, please send me an email. This is Chameleon Type Debugger. I hope you like it. I am happy to answer questions.